Welcome to the Upland Nation podcast. I'm Scott Linden, your host. We're going to go into the spaniel fields. Yeah, no, not fields full of spaniels, but full of spaniel knowledge now that I think about it and how they work and why they're getting so popular. Gundog Magazine columnist Jerry Ray Caccio is my guest this week on the program. So stand by if you've wondered about them, if you have one, or maybe you've worked with one in another or two situations. We're going to answer all your questions about these sprightly and loving little animals that are now making their way into the upland fields in a big, big way. That's not all, of course. Here on the Upland Nation, we'll cover all sorts of other things, including uh, what you would do when you encountered a no trespassing sign that's on the list for later in the in the broadcast. Uh, I'll give you a new place to hunt just in case you're looking for one this season. The Upland Nation glossary gets to the letter K and... uh, Well, we'll just have a little chat here and there, all made possible by Roughland Performance Kennels, Sage and Breaker Gun Care Products, Pointer Shotguns, Dr. Tim's Natural Performance Dog Food, Mid-Valley Clays and Shooting School, the Ringneck Nation of Huron, South Dakota, and FurFeathersFriends.com. Yeah, that last one is near and dear to my heart. If you want to learn more about how it works and what you might be able to get out of it, just visit the website, furfeathersfriends.com. Helping to break in a new English-style pub here in Bend, Oregon. Yeah, <laughs> I know, but it's true. In fact, the the barkeeper last night actually had an English accent, which was kind of fun. And uh, English style uh, ales, what they call real ales over there, um, brewed the right way, cask conditioned, and then pumped out of the cask using the manual message, uh, the manual method. You know those uh, the good old timey what they call. Uh, beer engines you know you really have to pump those things you pull the lever and the beer comes out it's kind of cool literally it's kind of cool at about cellar temperature and uh, well thank you for your hospitality over there at the cellar yeah traditionally downstairs even better but uh, while i was there um, was meeting with a, a friend and training partner from way back and soon to be fishing partner as well and jim and i were talking about his young dog about a year old and uh, and i remembered all the things i'm still living through with a four-year-old but that might be worth thinking about again for anybody out there who's training a dog right now and i could sure relate to it he said yeah i think i got the obedience things down the dog walks at heel he, you know da 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 uh, now to put on the steering wheel and the brakes and uh, and he's he's kind of a mechanic a shade tree mechanic probably way beyond that actually he's a mechanical engineer but plays with that kind of stuff and i thought his analogy was pretty good um now with that dog it's time to put it all together and uh, add the birds to all yeah as the ultimate distraction and you know i i thought about it and i thought well he's he doesn't need a lecture because he's He's lived this a few other times, and uh, he is still, um, you know, working on the things that we all work on all the time, and and it just comes back to some really simple stuff. We're still trying, I think, to get our dogs to go away when we want them to, stop when we want them to, and come back when we want them to. Fundamental stuff that the Smith cousins and grandpa delmar put together so long ago and others as well in various forms the idea being add more distractions and expect your dog to do the things you still want it to do go away stop come back make any sense what are you working on a variation on that i'll bet whether it's steadiness or retrieving or any of those other things, if you think about those three skills, that's really what they are. Oh, 
All right, we're bringing back uh, my favorite subject, and that is public access and wild birds and where to find them. Of course, that's the whole idea behind findbirdhuntingspots.com. If you want more of that, that's a good place to start. You can search by state, by bird species, you name it. But here is one that near and dear to my heart again, and I'll be passing through it on my way to Huron, South Dakota this season. The Fort Pier National Grasslands. Now, I don't feel bad telling you that's a great place to go because it's so vast and so overwhelming from from a perspective standpoint. But everybody should experience that place for a couple reasons. Number one, it is what America's midsection looked like back in the day. Rolling hills, short grass, potholes every once in a while. Yeah, and even a windmill here and there. But it's also got all the comforts of home nearby in either the closest town, which is Fort Pier, or cross the river and stay in Pier, South Dakota. Don't forget the time change. Yeah, the river marks the demarcation between, uh, let's see, central time and mountain time. Uh, But that whole region has uh, so much to offer the all the comforts of home in the towns but early season sharp tails yeah just about anywhere on the fort pier national grasslands and then at the edges and folds in the creek beds ringnecks you never know what you might find i've actually shot prairie chickens out there as well so if you're looking for a new place to go and you're heading for the upper midwest check out the fort pier national grasslands and the upland nation podcast is brought to you in part by sage and breaker gun care products crafted at the highest caliber you know fred bohm will keep you posted if you just sign up at sageandbreaker.com keep you posted on all the new gear coming down the pike from his company and also first notice on the upcoming very rare sales that take place No matter what you're doing on sageandbreaker.com, if you order something, it's always shipped free. From hardware to tools, cases, and anything else you need in the way of taking care of your firearms, shotguns, handguns, rifles, it doesn't matter. He's got something for everybody. It's all at sageandbreaker.com. And if you want to take care of a new gun, Check out LegacySports.com. That's the home of pointer shotguns. Just got my new pointer. It's the Acrius model, and I like the traditional bluing and the nickel finish on the receiver, but you can also get it in a number of Cerakoted colors. Protect that metal just a little bit more with a microscopic coating of, well, some sort of ceramic. I don't know much about how that works, but I know they look cool. They're just a little different. Maybe a discussion topic at one of your hunting uh, happy hours. It's all available at LegacySports.com, including the new 2022 catalog. You can get it online or you can order one there and have a hard copy sent to you at LegacySports.com. Yeah, and uh, now it's time to finally get to the meat of the matter here. If you're intrigued by those little dogs that uh, every time we see them on TV, they jump into their handler's arms. They just love to hunt. That's the Cocker Spaniel, the field bred Cocker Spaniel. And I can't think of anybody better to talk about that topic than gun dog columnist Jerry Ray Cascio. Jerry, welcome back to the Upland Nation podcast. Oh, well, good morning. How's everything? So far, so good. So <laughs> we'll good. see. Maybe, maybe we should quit now. <laughs> yep, yeah, while we're ahead. <laughs> if only that's how it worked. <laughs> um, so uh, make us all jealous. Uh, at the moment, you're down someplace where um, the snow I'm looking at through the window uh, <laughs> probably doesn't get very often. So and, uh, I'm in uh, Lantana, uh, Florida. Um, I do a lot of traveling, so I'm about maybe eight minutes from the Palm Beach Airport, which makes it very com- convenient for me. 
Oh, I bet. Uh, and these days, the Palm Beach Airport is probably almost as busy as some of the other uh, so-called international airports. Yeah, it's it's not that bad. Uh, Lauderdale and, of course, Miami are packed, but we're, we're doing okay. Good. And, uh, you know, you spend some of the time down there, but you spend a lot of time uh, back up north in a place that I still love visiting and don't get to mm-hmm. very often. And that's the Hudson River Valley up in uh, what I'll loosely call uh, upstate New York. But tell tell me more about your background from up there. Okay. Well, I started training dogs in 1967. Um, it's been my whole life. Uh, I spent 20 years with IBM. I have an EE degree. I must say, IBM was very kind to me, but I hate it. I I love the outdoors, you know. Uh, My grandfather, Herman Melanthin, um, had cockers, American cockers, by the way, which which, um, is probably going to upset some people, some of my friends, too, that they're not a good dog. I'm sorry. They're, they're, they lost all their genes for hunting and everything like that. But he had um, a dual champion uh, cockers. He had a black cocker, American cocker, that won best in show in Madison Square Garden uh, two years in a row. So hopefully I picked up some of his genes. Uh, but that's how I started out with dogs. It was, you know, I had one of my grandfather's dogs, a, a black cocker called uh, Jackie. And um, that that kind of started my career going. Uh, and then I got into Springers, okay. Um, and I got to say, you know, it's like your first girlfriend. I just love them. Maybe it's not your first girl. <laughs> she didn't love that. <laughs> but anyway, uh, they've been my whole life. Uh, I've been very fortunate and lucky that I've won two nationals with two different dogs. I judge more trials than anybody in America. Uh, I'm in the Hall of Fame. And also my dog that won the national is in the Hall of Fame. Uh, I was like I said, I do a lot of judging and I do seminars and, and now I'm introducing to a, a writing career, which I have no idea what I'm doing. Thank God there's editors that <laughs> to, 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 to take the bad words out and put the commas where they belong and the period where they belong. Well, uh, it seems to be working okay for you. I've enjoyed your column. I'm a pointing guy, but I I do love the flushing dogs a whole bunch, and we're lucky enough on TV to use them fairly regularly. And and let's start with that topic, because it seems to me in the last 20 years, um, little cocker spaniels in particular um, have become quite fashionable at hunting lodges, for example, uh-huh. where where they're paired with a pointing dog of one sort or another. And and I, I, I know some of the reasons for that because I talk to everybody who has to work with these dogs or gets to work with these dogs. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, but t- tell me, how, how what's, what's your take on that whole scene? Why did that happen? Well, I must say I had a little bit to do with it. Uh, I also... Um, did some consulting work for Orvis. And my job was to, uh, you know, find breeders that would represent Orvis. Okay. And uh, Because most of your people that are buying dogs don't know anything about them, Mm -hmm. sad to say, in Mm -hmm. the beginning. And you got to get the right fly rod for what you're fishing. The same thing with hunting, you know. If you go to these preserves where it's a weekend shooter, and you need pointing dogs, usually German um, wire hairs they use. Good, solid dogs, strong, they can work every day. But um, I hate to say this to you, but my love is flushing dogs. And, and, and why? Because there's action. You yeah. know, it, yeah. to me, to me is, it's an event. You know, <laughs> it's just not like pulling the trigger. You got to pay attention to your dog. And we'll get into this more detail when I when you get tired of this and might talk, yeah, yeah. but, um, we, um, we just, uh, are just so exciting to watch And And now the new fad is these English cockers. Uh, mm-hmm. 
and they they're like a hummingbird on crack i say because they're just busy all the time okay uh a little bit more difficult to train than a springer i kind of think um they got a little cherrier in them they're just the way they act sometimes their tail goes up straight uh, they can be little buggers you know i i know i've trained a lot of them and uh I talk to the owner. Hey, come up and see him. He's really doing well. Ba ba ba. And next thing you know, we shoot a retrieve. It goes into the woods, and the dog's not coming back right away. I said, where, where's that bugger? And he's digging a hole, burying a bird. After I had him trained, you know. <laughs> but, but they have they have traits like that, but they're very exciting to watch. Well, what and, is what is it about that excitement? I I can I can tell you why I love them, uh, and have have mentioned a few of the things already, but. But I, I understand that idea that there's all you cannot be distracted. It is a full time occupation. Right. Right. But what what right. else, especially versus a Springer, for example? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, here we go again. I, I have a lot of experience. You know, I've guided a big preserve up in New York and uh, for 20 years. And uh, they just I mean, what? We learned down in um, Florida and Georgia, these little cockers can go in cover that the labs really will blink at, you know? And so they'll go in and get the birds up in the air. When a dog is flushing a bird, okay, it'll fly better than when a man goes in there with a flushing whip or a stick, okay? And, And everybody that sees them in the plantations, you know, they wanna bring them home. You know, sure. Yeah. Because they're they're good with the kids. You know, they jump on them, which I don't like. Uh, but it's it's part of their personality. You know, and um, I guess I, what I say is the main thing is our Springer world. Sorry, Springer people. We're into speed, and um, our dogs are getting higher on their legs. Okay, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and we campaign them in fields where you know you would run your pointers you oh, know? Boy. and then so they're picking up speed and speed and and they're almost especially in the summertime we shave them down a lot and uh almost look like a setter out there you know which is sad because they're they're, they're not supposed to look like that yeah. and you know i'm old enough where i've seen the style in the old days and the, they were maybe 40 pounds but they could go through cover almost like the cockers you know and the thing with the cockers are they're, they're biddable as far as hunting. You know, they're always going to stay in close. They got little tiny legs. How fast can they go? <laughs> but um, I judge a lot of those trials. And what I'm telling the people there, which I don't like, they're starting to run them in the field. Okay, a wide open field. And cockers are supposed to be, well, they're woodcock dogs, yeah, grass dogs. Yeah, mostly. The, hence the name. So, yeah, and they're yes, and they're putting their head down and going there, and they're putting their head over here. So they're hunting, you know, not just running. And um, so now the field trial people are starting to they'll have three series, okay? Yeah. And they'll run two series in the woods. And that's where they belong, you know, not out in the fields. And what they're doing with the cockers now, they're developing speed, which speed kills, you know. You, Sorry again, but you take your pointers out in the field, and I'll come with a spaniel or a cocker afterwards, and I'll find birds that you missed. You know, mm-hmm, so, mm-hmm. you know, the, with the speed factor and everything. You know, it's like driving a car. You know, if you're going 100 miles an hour, you don't have the control that I do when I'm driving 40 miles an hour. Yeah, I, I get it, and I, I never thought about it quite that way. But uh, in fact, we've we've come in even with slower, more deliberate. Uh, breeds of pointing breed dogs and done the same thing you know, kind of mm-hmm. hunt behind somebody if you will uh yeah. even <laughs> even wild birds uh we've seen that happen and literally uh coming back and swinging through a place we just watched somebody else go through i'm thinking of a place in montana just last season you uh, they covered it like a vacuum cleaner um and and it was pretty sparse ground to begin with but Mm-hmm. We, we came in with my wire hair who's uh it, who adjusts his range and his speed to a small degree still learning that stuff but uh-huh. that wire hair and one slow deliberate setter 
And sure mm-hmm. enough, we got birds up that those guys had just walked right past, right. and their dog, their dogs had streaked right past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Jerry, yeah. Um, Jerry Ray Caccio yeah. is is the gun dog columnist, uh, trainer, field trialer, uh, trial judge. I'm Scott Linden. I'm the guy who gets to ask the dumb questions here at the Upland Nation podcast. Um, of all the things you do, and I just rattled off a few of them. Uh, what it, what do you love most about uh, what you do. Okay. Good question. Um, I, I've been fortunate enough, you know, to, you know, win some nationals and stuff like that. And, uh, and all well and good. I had good dogs, you know, uh, but I love teaching now. I love teaching and, uh, I love teaching women. Okay. Uh, I have some cocker ladies that I work with. In fact, one just got a third in open all age state beating professionals and, and, um, some of the good, you know, pros that aren't really a professional, but an amateur mm-hmm. at a professional level, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but they pay attention, you know, and I don't know what it is. Uh, I kind of say a lot of them are horseback riders jumpers and oh, stuff like interesting that. yeah and if they don't listen to the trainer you know they could get hurt <laughs> you know and so but they just they're like like, like little birds in a nest they're chirping all the time waiting for daddy to give them some more food or you know a little cuddling and stuff like that and their voice is i believe there's a lot of things that i believe but i don't have a whole lot of data you know just yeah, experience yeah and and with their voice and the, the way they act i really i got some sorry i got some things that are just dreams of mine okay yeah one one is i've been very fortunate to see dogs two only two in my life that look me straight in the eye and if you look long enough you're gonna, gonna end up crying because <laughs> wow. it's almost like uh what do you want, boss? I don't care how hot it is. I don't care if I die. I'm going to do everything for you. Cold weather, you know, wet weather, whatever. You know, they just want to please you. And uh, so that's my my big thing now is teaching. I love to teach. And, you know, big deal. I train a dog and win a national. Big deal. I mean, yeah. it's okay, but. But when you can train an amateur that is on uh, Wall Street or something like that, and you teach them to slow down and think like a dog, you know, that you you stand back and you say, "I got you, I got you." I, you know? I, I love that, and and I'm I'm with you 100 percent, Jerry. The the thinking like a dog thing is is so yeah. critical, and you know, someday we should sit down and and write a column together on how to you know the, the exercises you could go through to think like a dog because you can't just flip the switch. You got to look yeah. for certain things, don't you? Yeah, I agree with that, but I want to ask you a question. You know what? And here's what I believe. One of the Jerryisms, you know, Rayisms. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think you're born with a talent. Yeah. You know? And the same thing with animals. I, I work a lot with race horses. Um, and it's, it's, but you still got to bring it out. Don't get, you know, sure. Yeah. But, but the talents there and, and you know, it within, whew, I say two or three days, you know, you got a lot of work to get the job done, but it's, it's, you know, they dogs, I used to have a problem with drinking and, um, I think we talked about it last time, but, um, mm-hmm. um, and those dogs I felt knew that I was drunk, you know? Oh yeah. Yeah. And it, it's funny. You know, I, I, um, did a half my life drunk and that the first year I sober, I ended up winning the national second year. I judged the third year. I won with another dog. So what I'm trying to, that that's data, but what I'm trying to say is that, 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 what do you, what you have in your body? I don't, I don't know if it's your voice. I don't know if it's touch. I don't know if it's smell, okay? But the dog knows. The sure. dog knows. And women have a better way of doing it than men. Sorry, guys, but, uh, you know. Yeah, it, it is. 
it's it's actually remarkable because and then you add add horses to that because I, i'll sit in a, a in a paddock full of horses and and the the whole vibe changes mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and so if you've experienced that uh enough maybe there's something there it's contagious in, so, in one way shape or form um but but you also talk about um well so many aspects of of how a dog thinks hmm. and um and and how we can look at some of those things can can you give us some more concrete examples of yeah of yeah that? i just i just think of that when you say on my seminars um i uh, <laughs> a great line of mine is up we'll run the dog what it's, it's springer cocker doesn't matter mm-hmm. dog's a dog um and there's no rapport between the handler dog is just a bunch of confusion mm-hmm. and uh so i say okay sit the dog down and i'll get close and i'll look right in their face i'll say what do you think that dog's thinking right now and they give you the stupid look and the, the handler and I said i don't know well that makes two of us because <laughs> the dog doesn't know and i don't know and it, you've got to break things down to the smallest denominator and then you got to build on that and build on that and i think we were going to talk a little bit about range we got mm-hmm. we're doing okay yeah okay and i we um roll a lot of birds in and what we use 99 percent pigeons and what i mean by rolling in when we first get a dog it's like their children they haven't had no discipline for the you know, eight months that they had them, and then they send them up to us. Yeah. And so the first time we take them out, um, in fact, we had one that, that I worked last summer, very nice dog turned out to be. But the owner was right there, and the dog just ran away all day, you know. Mm-hmm. We'd, we'd see him, but he wouldn't come back in. And uh, I use a lot of treats. I'm not a clicker trainer, but – I use treats and um, within two or three days, that dog was in tight with me a little too tight if you want to go on him, but <laughs> that'll always come back out. The genes will always, if you do that part, right, buying the puppy, right. And people cry over $300 difference in a puppy. Yeah. Well, you know what? That's going to save you 3000 and you're going to have a fun time hunting. And uh, so we roll a lot of birds, get them in close. And we teach them to sit where, and when I say teach, I really mean teach. And I, I'm a bugger with this, with anybody that I'm working with, and especially myself, is that sit means sit. There is, and I have different drills that I do, you know, where sit means, I love these new these new trainers that are using these play sports. Yeah. They, they, they're working, aren't they? I mean, uh, it's an object that the dog knows, the handler knows, and it, it's a good teaching tool. I hard, think. hard to fit in the hunting vest, but other than that, I agree. And, and it doesn't, <laughs> yeah, yeah. granted, I know I'm being yeah. funny, but yeah, yes, so so I remember when they first came in, it was a long while back, but maybe we shouldn't talk about that long while back because that ages <laughs> both of us. But I know what you mean, and, and it's absolutely true. There, And, and, and what I'm hearing you say is it, you've got to build – uh, you've got to build a, a foundation of trust, right? And then you have to create realistic expectations with the dog, right. especially right. early on, because those right. are those are lifetime traits, right? And if you don't do it right in the beginning, you're going to pay for it the rest of your life. Well, a lot of my students they go from kindergarten to Harvard. Yeah, you know. Yeah, uh, I'm saying to them, I said, you know what? you got to be a lot smarter than me. And they what do you mean? I says, what you say you're doing, and when you get done, you're getting done in two weeks, and it takes me probably three months. But I'm trying to get their attention and say, hey, but when I get it done, sit means sit. You know, retrieve means retrieve. And then, okay, well, it's sloppy retrieve. Well, he'll get better when he gets on. Why should he mm-hmm. get better? Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, it's so much the foundations uh, developing boundaries, you know, and then the, I always say the punishment should fit the crime. 
And if you're having a tough time with your wife or you're hungover, don't go training. You know, <laughs> the poor the poor dog doesn't deserve that, does he? You know. You, you know, it's it's funny, and we haven't used a single sports analogy that I can think of yet. But <laughs> but you know, in a lot of ways, what you're what you really are is you're you're the John Madden of of bird dog training. In that you you know when you get to a high as you go higher and higher levels. Mm -hmm. um it's more about um motivation than mechanics but right, but right. none of none of that works as vince lombardi said you don't win the super bowl on game day you win it in the weight room before mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and yeah. so all of those fundamentals need to be there and you need to build on them we're yeah. going to we're going to talk a lot more about that i want to talk about uh transitioning from training to the field we're going to talk about range and how we can maybe translate some of the things from the cocker and springer world to the pointing dog world all of those things are coming up <clears throat> pardon me on the upland nation podcast Jerry Ray Cascio, would you just hold on for a minute while I make a couple commercial announcements and then we'll be back, we'll be back with the rest okay. of our conversation. The rest of you pay attention. Uh, we got a lot more to talk about, including uh, K, the letter K in our Upland Nation glossary. Your comments on why and how you deal with a posted sign or a no trespassing sign when you find one in the middle of nowhere it's all coming up in just a moment, so stick with us. We're brought to you in part by AudioCardio.com. Just get mine all dialed in, literally. It's an app. All you need is a pair of earbuds and your phone, and you can you can actually work on your hearing. And you know how important that is. If you've shot a lot, you may have some hearing issues. But one of those is situational awareness. You know, you want to hear your dog, the collar tags, you want to hear a bird in the field. Well, this hearing wellness app at audiocardio.com is worth a look. I'm using it. You might want to do it too. There's a free 14-day trial, and then you can get it for as low as 8 bucks and 33 cents a month. Watch the two-minute video and learn all about it at audiocardio.com. And I was just uh, pulling my rough land kennel out of the truck last night for a purpose I'll explain in a future episode. But I was reminded of a couple things, how easy it is to handle and how well designed it is. Doug Sangle at RoughlandKennels.com is a bird hunter. He and I have had a good time together. He also is a wire hair owner, so maybe that's why he's doing it. But he has designed, and he is a pioneer in designing rotomolded dog crates. You want to take a look at all the features they have, from doors that open in both directions to dual doors on the side and the front, for example. No assembly required. When you get it, it is ready to roll. There are local dealers all over the country, or you can order online. Just go to roughlandkennels.com. And I wish it was literal, but it's figurative. Uh, we're going back to Florida now. And gun dog columnist, Spaniel man, Jerry Ray Cascio. Jerry, welcome back to the Upland Nation podcast. I'm glad to be here. I'm enjoying this. Thank you, Scott. Good. Thank you for not, thinking of me. Nothing more fun than talking about dog, unless, oh, unless we can God. go hunting, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know what? Well, I guess so. But Yeah. But, I'm at an age now where um, I, I, um, the enjoyment for me is getting the dog in a position where you can enjoy the hunting. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you, you know it's funny, and I, and I I don't want to belabor the point, but I'm I'm at the same point. And for years and years, when I would interview people, I I would, especially people in very high positions in the industry, for example, ask them what they loved most about hunting, and it was not hunting; it was taking somebody else hunting. You know, yeah. and and you're in the same realm. But let's let's do talk about hunting for just a couple minutes. Um, what would be your ultimate hunting scenario with one of one of the dogs that you've worked with uh, uh -huh. describe you know one great encounter in the field yeah uh well i i really have a hard time picking one i'll tell you what um 
like I said, I died in this uh, big club up in New York. And I mean, big, like uh, 3,000 bird uh, tower shoots. So wow. there's a lot of birds out there. And you've got to have control of your dog or, you know, your guide and you're looking for one thing birds and tip. You know? <laughs> and, and, and they go hand in hand, don't they? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, oh, I had a nice time with you. Yeah, that, but the, you see the guy coming up two weeks later. He didn't ask for you, the guy. You know? oh. yeah. uh, but, um, I, I um, a couple things that I do and what my guiding. Um, I, um, what well, my work is done first, and that that's most of the battle. Uh, I run them into the wind. Okay. Sure. Yeah, the first time I'm going, to, they're going to find more birds, build their confidence up, and and they're going to smell. The scent's going to keep them going too. Because we go out there and you know they're paying a lot of money. These people, they want two hours of hunting. They don't want to sit and eat an apple or something. Like <laughs> we do if we were hunting, you know, with friends and stuff. It's a commercial outfit. But what I do do, and I'm not a cock- collar trainer. I I work with some lab people that are brilliant with it. You know. I had to do it the old fashioned way and I, and I'm not going to change because I'm at that age now, you know, but the collar is a powerful, powerful tool. And, uh, I got a, my boss at, um, Perina now is, um, I used to work for Lardy for 17 years. And, uh, so he's taught me a lot with the Labradors and using the collar. It's come so far that what we do for our, now this is for we're trying to guide we're trying to keep the dogs in they're fully trained okay but the collar we condition them to the collar so they know what it means you know a little quick story on, on the side here yeah. i just had a friend come over with a jack russell i do not like jack russells mm. uh, <laughs> and, and you know anyway you do what you have to do for sake of a friendship but um this dog was a yeah like all of them they're yackers you know and she would go out of the house and work or something like that and the dog would be inside barking of course the neighbors didn't like that so I, I said well you gotta use a bark collar on the dog you know oh i don't want to electrocute that one it will <laughs> teach them faster than anything else and sure enough it came over and uh like quiet as a mouse you know we go out or something like that leave the dog in have the bark collar on him, and he would stay quiet. Now, why I'm telling this little story is if you condition the dog properly, again, that word properly is so important. You know, you, we just put it on them, you know, and, and they they know what it means. And uh, they stay in close, they stay steady, and it, it, it works nice. It's a, it's a tool like everything else. And, yeah. And, and, I, and so, so we talk good game about quote collar conditioning unquote walk me through that process condense it down but what are the what are the basic steps Mm -hmm. now first of all let's clarify i'm not a collar trainer so yeah some some of the really good guys that are going to laugh when they hear this podcast but uh what we do is we teach them to come because that's one of our first lessons with the dogs that come into us. They, oh, they come. They come at 4.30 when it's time to eat, you know? <laughs> and, and you open the door and whistle and you say, well, he comes all the time. Well, how about if he's uh, on a bird or got a bird in his mouth, will he come back, you know? And um, so that's and he, we have to do that anyway. So we'll put the collar on him, okay? Say he or come. I don't care what word you use. We use the use come. And uh, we'll uh, have the collar on continuous, okay? Mm-hmm. Very, very low uh, range. What's beautiful about these new collars, you can set, when I saw them used in the old, old days, you had plugs you put in there and the poor dog. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, he, got, he really got burnt. And he would probably half the time stop retrieving. But anyway, so we push the continuous down okay when he gets halfway we have a check cord on him just in case be safe um when he gets about halfway in and we're only i teach at very 
short distances. And I mean short. Um, we start out about 10 feet. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. And build from that. So when he gets about five feet, we let up on the collar. Sure. He's doing okay. what you expect. Right. And you know what I'm teaching him? Mm. I'm teaching him how to shut that collar off. Yeah. You know, and I'm saying I'm not burning him. He just knows, wow, if he gets to me, there's no issues. And you don't burn them. A lot of people burn them, and that's bad, you know. They'll tell you what level they got to be worked at, you know. Don't be, a, you know, a macho guy. I've been out guiding with people, and I, they have the transmitter, and they miss a couple of birds, and they <laughs> burn the dog. Yeah, it's <laughs> always said, a dog's that fault. Collar. <laughs> yeah, right. It's a collar. <laughs> it's a collar. It's a dog. Uh, I said, oh, boy, I'm going to put that collar on you people. Let's see. I... But it, that's – and, and – that's very simple, okay, and that's what we do, okay. Yep. And my friend Ray, he, uh, he's, you know, he's well. They're doing labs and they're retrieving at three hundred yards. It's, 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 they have to do that tool. They, they really have to use it properly. And it's funny how they've come from. Uh, they usually were, you know, sorry, lab trainers, but they, they usually were heavy handed. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, um, now they're, they're like pussycats, you know, and of course it's working better for them. Do and you, the garm, yeah, go on. Do you, you know, uh, here's uh, what I've learned after five wire hairs who, who, who have been everything from hard headed to soft. Mm-hmm. The collar to me is, uh, more of a reminder. It's more of a, a post-it note to a right. dog to you know the dog is out right. there uh tempting the in a tempting situation if you will uh mm-hmm. in the woods when you're not uh with a bird or finding a bird or whatever it is that you're you're away from the dog the dog's away from you and what you want to do is you want that dog to run past one of your post-it notes that says hey hey don't forget yeah, yeah. don't forget you're working for I'm me <laughs> yeah, so right, it's it's right. a little reminder and yeah. um and you don't need high voltage for that most no, of the time. In fact that that ruins that ruins everything cuz here's what I and like I say I I do some collar seminars but nowhere near the level of these good guys I I start out with a sto- first of all they all got to feel the collar yeah okay? yeah and, you know electric they think they're going to get an electric chair or something then i go to here if you go to a stove and it, it's on if it's on the low level you keep your hand there and you say what's going on here what's what's turned on what it makes you think mm-hmm. if, if you if that thing's hot you pull your hand away from it yeah. you know yeah and you so, and and you and there's an impression there that uh, may be negative Yes, it is. That may be. Oh, my God. I mean, like our Spaniel, we want them to flush. Yeah. But, you know, and some, whatever, owners want their dogs to point. Well, why don't you buy a pointer then? Is my first <laughs> question. But, uh, you know, and, you know, if you just put a collar on them, they'll point in no time, you know. Because wow. what they're, again, what's the dog thinking? The dog's thinking this bird is causing discomfort with me. You know? Yeah. And another cute thing is we, because we, we had a big kennel back in New York, and sometimes we have sixty to a hundred dogs. Board, we do a big boarding, big boarding business. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, we can take the collar after they've had it on, and hook it on the gate, hook it on the gate, you know, so they see it. Oh wow! And they and they stay quiet, but they've been conditioned with the collar first, you know. There you go. Uh, oh, that's funny. So, so I want to talk about two things. I was, um, you know, I admit it, you know, I always, uh, I look for my byline all over the internet just to make sure I'm getting paid for everything I wrote. <laughs> and in the course of doing that, I, I found you again and I'm glad I did. But the, the piece that, that, that I found was one that I think is relevant to everybody, <laughs> whether they're owning flushers, uh, pointers or everything in between, or something that does both depending on how the dog feels. And that is, mm-hmm. Uh, uh, transitioning from the training situation or the chain training period in a dog's year to the field and real hunting. Uh, what are the, what are the critical factors in that? Do your homework. 
simple as that. Uh, we uh, never have a problem with that if it's done properly. Mm -hmm. Where we have a problem is a dog money or whatever, get homesick or whatever. Um, and the owner says, well, I got to take a while. I said, he's only been a, here a month. This is a three-month program, you know. And, uh, well, they take him home. Well, you, when you take him out hunting, he, he might be good for the first bird, the second bird, the third bird. But then he's going to say, I, I don't need this guy anymore. Yeah. You know? And the way we're training, with the birds being in front of us, the dog thinks the action's with us. And it's amazing. I, hope, I wish you didn't live so far away. I mean, it, people can't believe what happens in that. Most of the time in a seminar, it's it's two days. I'm talking a dog that ranges, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But now I want to go back and say that if that's done properly, and the key word is properly, Scott, and, you know, we never have a problem well, when we go hunting. Is it, I mean, wh what is the thing that we should keep in mind most the f on opening weekend that, uh, let's just say the dog was well-trained, we did mm -hmm. a we did okay. a good job. You and I mm -hmm. together did a good job. Mm -hmm. What's the most important thing we we should re keep in mind when we drop the tailgate on the first day of the season? Yeah, I I, I go back to I think I run, like to run them into the wind. Yeah, and uh, even before you see, so much can happen before you go hunting. Yeah, what I used to do when I, I would never train more than ten dogs, and I only had maybe two field trial dogs that. But I would feed them, okay? Yeah. And i take them for a walk in the woods. All of them. All of them. You know, what a beautiful sight that was. Woo! <laughs> and I would zigzag. I wouldn't whistle or anything. And when they came back to me, I, again, it would be treats. It's, it's a, a feeling that you almost have to see it, you know, that they want to be with you. What is more important, hunting for them? Hunting or being with you? The truth is hunting, but you gotta, you gotta, I, I gotta, I use a bad word here, but you gotta play with their mind, mind mm -hmm. something, and uh, you know that hey, here's where the action is, buddy. You know, and especially when you're hunting, take a break. You know, sit down, have a, give them a drink of water, and you know, be be friends. You know, and some that's different and different breeds that I see. And uh, I train some Chesapeake, sorry, Chesapeake people. Uh, <laughs> but they're, uh, they're, uh, they're, they're tough. You know, they're tough to handle. And, and again, I'll go back. It should be an event. And if you don't, cause you want, if you're hunting, how many times, how many minutes do you think you pull the trigger? If you, even if you have a good day, three, five at the most, mm -hmm. you know? So it's an event, watch the dog, read the dog. That's what a lot of people do wrong when they go, first time when they go out hunting. And guess who was the biggest one at that? Me. <laughs> uh, I'd be guiding, i see a bird running across the field and the dog wouldn't go that way. I'm pushing on, pushing on, blowing a louder whistle. I'm getting mad, you know? Sure enough, I, I'll go on here, so it's a smart ass. And the dog would go and and produce the bird, you know. You're you're describing uh, basically a uh, um, canine ice dancing, and I use that term deliberately yeah, as opposed right, to figure right. skating. Ice dancers, um, maybe you don't know this. We happen to have known a couple Olympic level ice dancers, and and they wow. got to I mean, they're they got to think like they got to share one mind mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. and and they got to they got to anticipate each other's moves in a in a, a different way because they're literally always touching that's the mm -hmm. the point mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you're describing yeah. almost the same thing granted the little dog is way down there at ground level you're up here and ideally you've yeah. got some sort of mental telepathy going but some of that stuff you have to do outwardly as well. Um, you know, even a nice dancer pushes their partner in one direction or another when they would need to go in that direction. Right. right. So, so what are some of the cues you give a dog? For example, and this is one of my classics. I'm out in the woods every day with my wire hair and he adjusts his range. I got no problem with that. But 
I would like him to be more aware of where I am and stay in front of me mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. he'll, he'll work some piece and I'll keep moving forward. So how do you keep your dogs to the front? Okay. Good question again. Um, well, my dogs, they, they were in tune with my shoulder. Okay. <laughs> and I, I, I could use my hands if I wanted to, but most of I just would do something with my shoulder and they go left or they go right. Uh, the problem that even I have uh, when you've got a dog hunting, what do you do when he's going out forward? Yeah. Left and right's not a problem but when he's going out forward. And uh, that again, they got to be trained. You know, that, that whistle's got to mean turn, get back mm-hmm. here. We, we teach all our dogs a figure eight and, and how we do that all the actions in front of us. Yeah. They, they, we don't let them find a bird with their nose for the probably the first that things will happen. Don't get me wrong. Sure. Uh, but, uh, you know, if they, if they start thinking they're smarter than us, we see it with people all the time. They just shut you off. Follow me, you know, and you can't have that when you're hunting. You can't have it. But you got a better shot with a pointer. You know, he's, if he holds, you just walk up. But with a spaniel, everything happens so quick that he better, unless you've got a rifle, he better be, what would you say, 20? Oh, yeah. 20 yards, maybe. I wouldn't want him any more than that, you know, because they're going to find it, and then they're, they're going to maybe trail it or something, so that, you know, that may be, end up being 30 yards. You know? Well, that's out of my realm. I mean, that's the top, <laughs> top end for me. And that's if <laughs> everybody, everybody, I think. So you end up crippling the bird, you know? So, so how are you keeping them there? I mean, you said your shoulder. I, I don't get it. I got two of those. I can do all sorts of things. Are, are, the, are the dogs watching them? Or are you doing, you know, are yeah, you an ice because, dancer too yeah. or what? <laughs> it kind of, it kind of looks like that really. And like, now I'm talking about high quality, my field trial dogs, but mm-hmm. the hunting dogs, you get them going the same way, but not with the, you know, it's like me or you on ice skates, you know, yeah. the, the ones that really are together looks beautiful. Well, I'm going to get a sip of water. Sorry. Yeah. That's not me. I, when I'm on ice skates, I'm usually on ice. <laughs> my ankles are too weak. Yeah. I but anyway, <laughs> see, by, by putting the bird in front of us. Yeah. Okay. Let's say I get a dog. The first month, we got the retrieve and we got the gun squared away. It's the pigeons, mm-hmm. and uh, they don't the field we train in. There's no there's no wild birds or anything. It's just the field, and everything is from us. So what do you think that dog's like? I better stay with Raymond. Yeah, he's got a better nose than me. <laughs> you know. <laughs> And I got a bigger one. I well, there you out. go. Like, being, you being beat me to it. That was my line. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it, Scott, you got to see it to believe it. it. It just, it goes so fast and it, and it, uh, it stays with the dog. Yeah. It, you know, and, but I'm talking about three, three months program. Yeah. yeah. And my field trial dogs, they never went home. So they, they were kind of idiot proof. Okay. Know. So, so let's but, get, hold on. Cause I, okay. I, I'm, I'm following you so far, but Jerry is standing on point a and, uh, the cocker spaniel is at point B, which ideally is in front of him. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the bird, the dog is learning that that's where the birds are. But how is it learning that? Has somebody put those birds out already, or are you? No, 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 no. What, you ne- good question. You never want to plant a bird. When I don't. I'm not going to say that. Most of the time, you don't plant a bird. If okay. You got a dog that that's really doesn't have a lot of prairie drive. You may plant birds and run them into the wind. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But let, let's say you got a normal dog with some genes and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I have a English. I spent I spent two years running a shooting place over in England and Wales, and I learned so much over there. But anyway, um, so but the best thing I brought back was this game bag. I could yeah. put maybe seven pigeons in there. Yeah. And, and so, the, I want the dog to range a little bit. Mm-hmm. I sneak I sneak in a pigeon in front of me. Okay. And he's twenty yards out. I don't care fifty, sixty, whatever. Yeah. And I give him a whistle. Beep, 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 beep. I call it a crazy whistle. Yeah. Okay. And he comes back. I may even let him see me in the beginning. Uh-huh. And hopefully yeah. he puts together, hey, the action is with this guy, Raymond. 
Yeah. He knows everything. Bye, bye, bye. And I tell you, at the seminars, it's unbelievable. Two days, the dog is quartering. So what do you, you know? do? Are you taking him out of the bag and putting him on the ground? Yeah, right okay. in front of me. All right, right in okay. front of me. Yeah. So, uh, and that's how we develop a figure eight. If yeah. you ever had yeah. time when you're just sitting around, more, uh, I'm a spaniel man, but I would think it was the same thing with a point dog. Sure. Yeah, but, the, you know, it's almost when they do that figure eight, the figure eight is shaped differently depending on the wind. Okay, yeah. the loops are yeah. going to be a little bit better. Sure. If you want, to, if you want to sell a dog, you run them into the wind. If you want to keep them, run them downwind. Yep. Because they never, they never look good downwind. Because they got to go out there, they got to bite a lot of land, <laughs> and people are saying, you know, they're they're out of control. Well, they're not. They're using their their brain properly. Yeah. But it, it, it works so quick. And then also, you know, in the beginning, let's say the second month when we're studying them, the action's right in front of me. Yes. So he flushes, and I'm three feet away, four feet away, and I, I give him a good sit whistle. He's going to sit. Yeah. And then if, if does, I use my voice, but everything, everything in my training philosophy has to be done close to me. Yeah. I don't start marking retrieves at a hundred yards because all you're teaching is get back, get back, get over. There. <laughs> you know, we have a path, a mowed path that's probably a hundred yards. And we start them out maybe 10 yards, and we build and build and build. It's a no-brainer. It's a path. Yeah. And then as soon as they learn, so you get them doing straight lines, and, and you've got everything, on quick pickups. You, you'll you get it 10 yards. You'll never get it in the beginning at, at 50 yards. No. And, and that's why people just don't – they've got to – you've got to build little, little tiny positive lessons. And I just believe that too much. Everybody tries to do too much at once, all different a retrieving drill, a yeah, steadiness yeah. drill, all at once. Teach them one thing, please. Yeah, we need to cook with a wood fired stove, not a microwave. You got it. I, I, can I use that one? You, you are welcome to that. I'm a professional writer, and I just proved it, didn't I? <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, you know, when I say one of my things, especially when I got some ladies there, I said, nine women cannot have a baby in one month. It's a process. <laughs> you know, it's a process. And uh, yeah. uh, I, But I, the whole world now is, you know, McDonald's, let's get it done yeah, quick. Let's eat fast. 30 you know? seconds to load a website. Yeah. That's just to 29 <laughs> seconds too long. I, I want to talk a little about, about the, the the world of uh, Spaniel trials for, uh, for a couple of reasons. I have a a hunting buddy, professional guide who's been kind enough to put up with me over the years on TV. <laughs> and he he's a gunner at all the Spaniel trials in Montana. He is. Yeah. And, oh, Montana. Yeah. I, this, I probably know him. Okay. Yeah. So he, he is a dead eye. He shoots okay. old side-by-sides, and he shoots them. Yeah. Like well, you know why, no, don't you, Scott? Talk because to me. If God wanted you to shoot uh, over and under, he would have put your eyes on top of your forehead and then by your chin. Okay, your everybody, eyes, there you go. Side the, by the, side. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> I shoot a side by side. Uh, so, so he's great at that. But how do? I mean, he's legendary, and other gunners in the spaniel trial world are also legendary. As if gunning for a spaniel trial is harder than gunning for a pointer trial. What is? Oh. What is it that makes it so much harder? Well, you you got pheasants, and, and there's a lot of surprise, and you do yeah. not know where the birds are. Mm-hmm. With a pointing dog, a good pointing dog, he's on point. Yes. <laughs> and you take your time, you get set, and everything. It's, it's like I say about skeet and trap. Okay, that gets you swinging a little bit and this and that. But there's nothing like when you're walking the field, I think the most important thing, I'm not an expert, but I, I can shoot, your left foot. Yeah, and when you're walking, you got that already set up, don't you? When you're shooting ski and trap and everything. Yeah, a lot of a lot of people do. Yeah, yeah, and when you're walking, that bird gets up. You could have your left foot behind, Mm -hmm. kind of, Mm -hmm. but you got you don't people don't realize how much time you have, you know, to get your feet right, and then the gun will swing and you'll kill. But the, like you say, those guys at the trial, they're unbelievable. What they what they do, and, and I do when I'm judging, uh, they make shots that normal people couldn't make, okay? Yeah. And, uh, I, I put down in my notes, out of control. 
the dog. Yeah. You know, because the dog is supposed to be in here, you know. Oh, you know, I see. Yourself, yeah, honey, yeah. And I, I call that out of range, you know. Yeah, but, but, but isn't there a middle ground in there? Because one of the things I remember about Spaniel trials is you want to, you want a flashy, somewhat long distance retrieve, which means sometimes a bird gets up and you want that gunner to count to five before he pulls the trigger. Or am I just missing something? Uh, no, you're messing up. But I love your questions uh, because it's a pet things that I have. That, yeah. That, you know, because I judge so much, I get away with it, you know. Mm -hmm. So I had a guy, I don't mention his name, but he, he's a long bird shooter. And my problem with a long bird shooter is you don't kill all the time. Yeah. You get a lot of cripple. Yeah. And a lot of guys, oh, I cripple and I can win the trial. Yeah. You know, so let's say he shoots long on me. This guy did it twice back to back. And he came over to me and he says, uh, Ray, uh, you know, these birds are down. I says, yeah, but, you know, I don't want a dog to win this trial because he made a long retrieve. That is the least important thing in the whole thing. It's a, it, again, it's an event. The dog's got to stay close. He's got to show nose. He can't point the bird. And it's a total thing, you know. And to me, anyway, retrieves never, ever win a trial, even a national. It's, it. Except, it helps you. Don't get me wrong. It's yeah. a total package. Total Except package. The, the one time early on in my dog training career, which has never been professional, as anybody can see when they watch me, but we were at one of those kind of fun, uh, uh, what do they call them? Challenges, you know, yeah. six shells, shells were one time dog, limit. blah, yeah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never even hit the dang bird, but <laughs> my dog didn't know that and made about a 450 yard retrieve. And that was what won us the little trophy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, but field trials are different. Oh, absolutely. And I understand yeah, that. In fact, uh, I want, I want to talk about that for just a, because you've been around all that and it's, it's a foreign country for most of us, but you know, good field trials, good hunting tests help people create good hunting dogs. Uh, but uh, out of all of that, you must have seen some pretty incredible things over the years. What are some of those moments that will are indelibly etched in your <laughs> judge's mind? Uh, I love all your questions. Um, again, 1967, it's a long time ago, isn't it? And, uh, I can't even we, remember we, back then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot, buddy. Uh, you know, our dogs, like I said, were lower springers. Let's talk about springers for a second. Because Cocker's kind of a new breed and, and it's going to take off, and I hope they don't ruin it. Mm -hmm. but in my mind, I think, here's my philosophy. I think we've ruined Springer Spaniels ruined them okay here's my philosophy if the breeding is right you should be able to watch one of your videos and go out and train the dog not to win a national but he's going to stay close he's going to like to retrieve he's not going to be running at 100 miles an hour yeah and now because when i was we had maybe only 20 dogs in a trial. And we used to be at Larry McQueen's a real pl nice place in New Jersey. And there were briars and boy, if you, you could, you know, you could wear shorts at a trial now today, yeah, yeah. but you know, where the briars and everything would cut the dog up, cut you up. But the dogs learn, Hey, I want to hunt like the cockers are doing now. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. that's called hunting. What we're doing now is we're producing greyhounds that run like hell. And, you know, that oh, wow, he didn't get out far enough. That's one of the things, you know, and I, it's driving me crazy. I, I can't believe they still ask me to judge and stuff. But it's, 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 you know, I'm so old school. And you know what? You learn later in life, you know, that maybe your parents knew everything and they were protecting, even though you say, oh, but I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. But, you know, and... And it was just so nice back then, you know. I, you know, you could. What I'm saying is, go recap. If you get a field trial today, if you get a field trial champion and breed it to a field trial champion, and you have a, a litter of six, you will buy a garment. <laughs> and that and that's sad, isn't it? 
That is wow. sad. Oh, what, we're in, taking, in the, we're taking in the, the flushing the... world, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, garbage world is probably wonderful. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's just, you're not really teaching, you know? I mean, it's sad to me. It really is. And, and like well, you say, the guns are way out there and yeah. they ride the birds. Wow. Out. And, you know, if I'm worried about retrieving, I better have a black lab. You know? Yeah. yeah. You know, you you did better than me. They say about about my generation, if you remember the 60s, you weren't in them. <laughs> you weren't there, man. <laughs> uh, that's my line, too, because I went to Woodstock. Oh, wow. I, 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 I don't remember a thing that happened. <laughs> oh, yeah, I neither do I, but uh, that's for many other reasons. <laughs> uh, you know, oh, we're getting to the end of our time together, at least for now. But if you were going to leave us all with one bit of advice about dog training yeah. that 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 we should uh, we should tattoo on our left foot forearm so we can see it every time we we go uh out into the field with our dog what what would you tell us well i would say well, my personal opinion yeah have have scott with me because he asks all the right questions <laughs> and, and you know what you just can't beat the foundations right yeah and don't don't blame and and it took me a long time to get this part don't you know don't, didn't doesn't happen in a week a year it, mm. it's just a lot of dogs being a professional you get a lot of dogs and you've ruined some because of your stupidity and you know temper or whatever you know you can't admit mostly guys too again yeah uh defeat you know and the biggest thing i i'm teaching somebody now and i've I've been winning five years and i haven't won the battle yet (laughs) uh he's always got an excuse but you got to point the finger at yourself okay he's dropping the retrieve three feet from me or whatever what am i doing wrong you know i don't you know what do you want oh i'll put a collar on him i'll do this you know uh, you're not teaching properly i i love that and 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 let me just summarize that for me because i need this kind of reminder all what you're saying to me i hear at least is um we we need to think more about what we're doing when we're trying to yeah. train yeah. and we're, we're not yeah. thinking about yeah. we're just doing it we see some guy do it on in a book or a video and we try yeah. to just mim- mimic it yeah, yeah. and yeah. Uh, and the and the great trainers that i know are thinking men they, all the time yeah it, it, and they're not all men of course but the, you know the, the, the they are constantly wondering exactly what you just described yeah. if it, if it's not working uh i don't dial up the collar i don't no, yell at the dog yeah. i don't yank yeah. the cho- uh, the 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 check cord yeah. i i think i'm doing something wrong and yeah. uh, and I learned that back in the music business a long time ago. It, you know, it's never anybody else's fault. I mean, it's no. me and the notes right. on the page and the instrument mm-hmm. in my hand. Mm-hmm. And so you can't blame it. You can't blame it on the pianist. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. well, yeah. words to live by from Jerry Ray Caccio. <laughs> you can find more of his words all the time, not only in Gundog magazine, but uh Gundog online, lots of great content there that you won't find in the magazine, including, a great beer story from me. So go back during happy hour and read that someday. But Jerry, it's, it's always fun to talk with you. We'll do it again. I'm going to cut you loose to enjoy the Florida sunshine. We've got a few more things to cover here. Thanks again for being a part of the Upland nation podcast. Scott, always a pleasure. Anytime, my friend. Thank you. And uh, we are going to cover a few more things, so don't go away. Uh, how you deal with that, you know, no trespassing sign. Some great advice from some of you on our social media. The Upland Nation Glossary, where it's the letter K. And again, you know, I, I realized I'm kind of kind of light on the Ks. So if you have any, don't hesitate to make a suggestion here and there. Appreciate all of that. And also appreciate your giving attention to these commercial messages. First from Dr. Tim's Natural Performance Dog Food. D-R-T-I-M-S dot com is where you get more information on what he has to offer, including a wide variety of formulations, including a wide variety of ingredients for your dog's life from puppy on up. 
supplements, toppers, treats, you name it. He's also got some of those. The key to these is they're all formulated by a veterinarian who's also a sled dog competitor. He knows about performance. That's the point. Performance dog food. Free delivery on every order right to your door. Get a 30% discount on your first order. Just use the code Upland Nation at drtims.com. And my friends Dave and Vandy at Mid Valley Clays and Shooting School invite you to work on your shooting game with a little bit of help, maybe a little coaching. Now, Jerry Ray and I have been talking about helping others in that regard with dog training, but do you ever think about what somebody could do to help you with your shooting game? Now, they're located in central western Oregon near the town of Salem. So if you're passing through, Stay a day and get a lesson from one of them or their fine group of instructors, depending on what your game is and what you want to learn. Learn more about what they have to offer and click on the instruction tab at midvalleyclays.com. Book a lesson and I can guarantee you, you'll be a better shooter and a better hunter as a result. Remember, We want to put birds on the ground for our dogs. The way to do that is to become a better shooter. Learn more at midvalleyclays.com. I love the Upland Nation Glossary because it's an exercise in broadening our horizons, and I hope you get the same thing out of it. If you want to look at the whole list and offer up some suggestions, Just go to findbirdhuntingspots.com, search around in there. The glossary is in a couple different places, and you can, I can guarantee you, you'll find a word you've never seen before. You'll find a word you wondered what it really meant. And maybe this time it's K for Kurzar. I think I'm pronouncing that right. That's my musical German, at least. Kurzar, K U R Z H A A R. All right, if you follow the dog world, you might know that those last four letters mean hair, har. The first four, kurtz, mean short. You got it. Deutsch kurzar, German short hair. The parent club over there in Europe, Verein, Deutsch kurzar, club, German short hair. All right, let's go to our um, social media. <clears throat> you know, I love the fact that you're willing to share your thoughts on so many deep and sometimes less deep philosophical challenges. I posted a, well, a no trespassing sign uh, tacked to a tree. Uh, pretty cool picture. I think I found that in Tennessee or Kentucky. Um says posted no trespassing and i asked the question your dog is on point on the other side of that sign now what got some great responses of course jerry mitchell spot on we should all follow these directions my dog wouldn't be there one of the online mapping tools would have told me to work the other way not that way all right i get it yeah no that's the no-brainer approach of course we all sportsmen are going to try and do that all right thanks Jeff Nuss has a, a a refinement on that. Unload, leave the gun on public land, and flush the bird. If I get caught, maybe they'll see I was trying to do the right thing by not carrying a gun. Yeah. <laughs> Bill Vesia says, learn to read. And then Vin Gee says, hey, man, my dogs can only read German. Okay. I mean, yabol. David DeSmither says, open and unload. Solid point, my dogs won't come. Yeah, and you know, there's a training aspect to that, too. Do you want to call them off a point? Hmm, that complicates matters. We're not in a philosophy class at the university, but that would be a great situation. Anyway, his won't come when they're on point. It's his fault for letting them go there, uh, but go get them. Uh, Bill Tyner thinks he could call his dogs off. The person who owns the property didn't buy it, so you could have a place to hunt ben waters i go pick up my little dog yeah my back is saying yeah if it's little i might too praise her for a good job then go work another area yeah makes sense uh 
let's see, uh, uh, Jerome Boggs has uh, a more pragmatic view. Honestly, guys, all of our dogs trespass at some point. I'll never forget. It, he's so right. I was hunting a kind of a checkerboard pattern up on a, a, a high desert river where there were chuckers. But without an online mapping program, I didn't know when I was transitioning from public to private, public to private, it was that subtle. I mean, no signs, no fence, nothing from a landmark perspective. You literally just crossed one step over and there you are. So we played it safe. We got the heck out of there. But um, Jerome says, uh, I mostly call them off. Sometimes it plays out. We get turned around. We all get turned around. I get it. Um, Rusty Shots has a, another practical suggestion. I only go in there to retrieve a bird that went down over there that had already been shot. There's a great joke in that. I'll tell it someday. But right now, I get that as well. And then... I know he's got his tongue in his cheek. That's why he had to type it instead of say it. Dan Gruder says, shoot the sign, leave my blue ribbon empties at the base of the tree. Ha, ha, I get it, Ed. You're all great comics, great philosophers. I appreciate all your input on that. Yeah, welcome back to the Upland Nation podcast. Our good friends in Huron, South Dakota. That's the Ringneck Nation I want more information on them, go to hunthuronsd.com. While you're there, ask for the free information packet. Maps, discount coupons, information on the area. You know, there's 124,000 acres of public ground within 60 miles of that town. That's why I go, and in fact, I'll be there this year. Maybe I'll see you there October 27th through the 1st of November. You want to go a little later in the season for the Ringneck Festival and Bird Dog Challenge? You can learn all about all of the opportunities for public access of all types, from waterfowl production areas to walking ground, you name it, they got it in Huron, South Dakota. Go to hunthuronsd.com. And on that note, I will thank you all for listening. Thank you to Jerry Ray Caccio for his wisdom and insights. After so many years as a trial judge, trialer himself, dog trainer extraordinaire, sure appreciate that wisdom. Thank you to all of those who have left ratings and reviews. Please uh, feel free to you know suggest friends who might also enjoy the Upland Nation podcast. And uh, I'll leave you with this uh, from, speaking of philosophy, John Steinbeck, well-known author who's uh, always got me thinking, including this quote. He says, I've seen a look in dog's eyes, a quickly vanishing look of amazed contempt. And I'm convinced that dogs think humans are nuts. That may be, but we don't mind, do we? I'm Scott Linden. Thanks for listening. Until next week, maybe I'll see you at a training day.